Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to have a look at the Bookworld Artwig reaction. And the Bookworld Artwig reaction is basically, um, if I just bring the reaction scheme up here, it's, it's a way of looking at an aryl halide, uh, reacting it with palladium, uh, palladium zero in this case, and get an oxidative in, uh, addition, as we do with most of these organometallic reactions. Uh, but the the difference here is um, rather than just getting a carbon carbon bond, we end up with a carbon nitrogen bond, which is really useful. And it gets us into these uh, aniline type of um, molecules. So, without further ado, we'll uh, we'll move straight into the catalytic cycle. I'll just move this down a little bit. Just bring the catalytic cycle up. Okay. So the first thing. As ever, as we've got we've got palladium zero species. Now, normally this is we'll talk a little bit about the ligands later, but the ligands are phosphine ligands. Um, we'll, we'll initially lose two of those ligands just to um, create a vacant site, really, for things to coordinate to. So these like coordination sites that um, appear. And um, what happens is you've got your aryl bromide. In this case, I've got a very simple structure here just to uh, illustrate. It the reaction. This will coordinate, so these uh, this electron rich aromatic ring will coordinate electrons into palladium and it will hover above it if you will and then all of a sudden it will flip and you'll get an insertion between um, the carbon and the bromine bond and this is called the oxidative addition step. So nothing, nothing too dissimilar to the Heck reaction, Suzuki uh, reaction, Sonogashira all those kind of reactions, stilly couplings, all those kind of things all proceed in this way, so we get oxidative addition first. So the next stage is we get attack or coordination in this case, as I've drawn it, uh, by the amine. Now it can be a primary amine or a secondary amine. Now the uh, whether it's going to be a primary amine or a secondary would depend entirely upon the ligands we have around palladium that's really important and this is where uh, Buckwald and Hartwig have, have really um, um, put in a lot of effort here just to give us the right conditions to use in order to make this quite simple reaction to uh, carry out in the lab uh, but a lot of effort over decades has, has gone into uh, doing this anyway we've got in this diagram here we've got what well, looks like a secondary I mean I've drawn it like this I've got R1 and R2 so first of all you get coordination in that one of those vacant sites that we've got and we've got already got our oxidative uh, addition product so we've just got a like coordination so we've replaced if you look here one of the ligands with another ligand so nitrogen can be a ligand just like phosphine can be a ligand so that's what happens first and then if we add base, or the base might already be present because we're going to have a catalytic cycle anyway, so we'll have base present. What happens is the base will take off um, a, a proton here. As it's coordinated, the electron density is, is coming away from this nitrogen-hydrogen bond, making this even more acidic. So the nitrogen will donate electrons into palladium and weakening that bond, so it'll be really acidic, so a base can easily pick it up. And it does that, and as it does that, we lose a ligand, oh sorry, we lose a bromine, sorry, um, with a base, and we get um, the insertion of the nitrogen instead of the bromine. So we get like a substitution reaction, almost. So now we've got like a covalent bond between palladium and nitrogen here. We've still got that ligand coordinated as well. But now we've got HBr in solution that have been mopped up by the base. Now this is where it goes a little bit wrong because um, we've got actually two competing mechanisms here and this is why Buckwald and Hartwick have got all the credit really for um, this particular reaction. A lot of people worked on this type of reaction before they did and so well certainly um, they were publishing a lot more before uh, Buckwald and Hartwick did um, but what's happened is they've it's been the sustained effort from the Buckwald group and the Hartwig group that's um, optimised this process really and so that's why they, they are, the reaction is named after them is because they've really looked into the mechanism and, and improved it to make it um, 
a, a very predictable reaction rather than uh, something that might give uh, certain brand products or not. So let's have a look at, first of all, let's have a look at the product. The product from this reaction, this is what we want to achieve, is this amine, this aryl amine um, molecule here. And that's just really a reductive elimination step. So you just get um, this group migrating over to the nitrogen, or the nitrogen move migrating over to that one, whatever you, you prefer really, and that's on that um, particular reaction mechanism. And then you generate the palladium zero species again, and the catalytic cycle starts. But I'll just take the product away a second. Okay, a byproduct from this reaction is actually the uh, beta hydride elimination product. And what happens here is you get the hydride transfer, this hydrogen here transfers onto palladium and you get elimination. So if I just draw that here, like this, so you've got the, I've circled the bond, that means basically I'm taking all those electrons across onto the palladium there. And then this one collapses back to give this double bond imine species here. And we've got hydride transferred across like so. And then this basically uh, reductively eliminates to give this molecule here. So that's what happens there. And of course we've still got this um, molecule here which is the way I've drawn it in cisoid and transoid confirmation. It's just going to be an equilibrium between the two but it doesn't really matter about the actual stereochemistry of that. Um, it, it will do for the elimination step but not, not when it's in solution. Okay, so that's one of the byproducts of this reaction, and this is what caused a lot of people a lot of grief in the early days, really. Um, so we want to try and avoid that. And the reason um, Hartwig and um, no, Bookworld have have got all the credit for this, if you will, I'll just delete that, is simply because they've really optimized, they've really worked hard on understanding what causes the elimination and 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 what drives this forward so this is what we want we want the um, amine there but as I've drawn it, it's a secondary amine so what's important to make a primary amine or a, or a secondary amine and also reduce the um, amount of beta hydride elimination comes down in, in the end to the phosphine ligands and I'll just, I'll just move that down a little bit. So it's all controlled by the phosphine ligands. Now, if you look on Wikipedia or in, in books or, or anything really um, to do with um, organometallics, you'll see that the, the ligands do play an important role, certainly if you're doing uh, asymmetric uh, catalytic reactions. And these are, these are some of the ones that have been particularly noted for this reaction. Um, but you'll, you'll see you'll see phosphine ligands like this um, use. They've actually been using the, um, the Heck reaction and the and the Bella catalysts and stuff like that. The the uh, platter cycle type of um, catalysts. Um, so this was a first generation catalyst, and nice. It's quite bulky, and it and it um, and it improves the yield, reduces the beta hydride elimination products. But unfortunately, it doesn't give, really give rise to. Uh, good products with secondary amines. So the second generation catalysts which were published use these um, diphenyl phosphine or uh, ferrocene type uh, complexes here and these are amazing um, ligands really. Uh, you know, I, I, I think for, um, ferrocenes are amazing things anyway really. They, they kicked off the organometallic um, um, subject um, back in the, the 50s anyway. Um, so this is DPPF, which is diphenyl phosphine or ferrocene. Um, BINAP, a lot of you are familiar with BINAP. Uh, so BINAP is uh, actually um, a chiral molecule. Uh, as you probably know, it's got, it's got uh, atrop isomerism there. So it's got uh, basically atrop isomerism is just just um, enantiomers that are caused by um, steric hindrance, really, a restriction on rotation about this bond here. So if I just draw, just get my pen up. So it's actually restricted rotation around here because these hydrogens here 
and here will clash make another whole thing clash so um, you have one one uh, naphthal group sticking out and one naphthal group sticking back and so, and so on and so on so that's that actually exists as a chiral compound but it's it's the the bidentate type of chelation that you get from these that actually makes it a powerful uh, ligand similarly with this one these are these are really bulky these really help to um, these bulky uh, type of phosphine groups really help to reduce that beta hydride elimination so that's basically the uh, buckwald hartwig uh, reaction there's a catalytic cycle and i'll i'll put that up on the um the epistemio website just so you've got a lot more material to work with than you have with this video um and oops i'll just move that up there so this is basically the basic scheme um and following the same kind of uh, process as we have for all the organometallic uh, reactions using palladium so bye for now